Was it, I'm always going to be in this shadow or was it, I want to make him proud? Was it, I still have his genes? Was it, we're destined to do something big? Like what? Because in most instances like that, it's more like, yeah, I'm just going to be his son. Yeah. Versus to, to come and create your own identity with that kind of a shadow. Yeah. That's not easy to do. Completely. And I, he always, he made it very, very clear. My father was also quite a morbid man. I think because of his life, even in his last years, he spoke all the time about, he, he had conversations which were, you'd be sitting at the table and he said, are you prepared for my death? And you'd just be like, wow, is that a will and testament? What are you talking about? Like, are you prepared? Like he'd talk about dying. He'd talk about me being the oldest son. He'd talk about me having to carry the torch. He talked about How stuff How soon did he start doing that? At what age? <clears throat> when I was young. 1920? Got it. Quite young. He'd so he, he died October 17, 2015. Correct. So you're saying 19, so that would be your 35, 25, so 16 years ago, yeah. 2006. Yeah. So 10 years before he passed away, he's talking to you that way. He's talking about death. He's talking about what that's going to mean. He's talking about how I have to carry the family torch. He's talking about my responsibilities and duties. He's talking about the fact that I need to evolve and be a better version of him. He talked about these things a lot. Now, he also used to, he to, till the day I was an adult, he still had a superior complex over me, and I, I respect it. My dad used to say things like, oh, you're champion now. You know, there's probably only one man left who could whoop your ass. That's who he was, right? He, he still believed he could she beat gotta me. You got to love that, though. Yeah, he still believed he could yeah. beat me. That's who he was. He's like, no, nah, you're maybe champ, but there's one man left who could whoop your <laughs> ass. And, and that's who he was. And I, and I had so much respect for him. I was like, yeah, because, you know, you're right. So that's just how he was as, as an individual. But um, I, I think it's the opposite. He, he set such a high standard in certain regards that... I knew I couldn't just be some normal guy. I'd feel guilt. I'd feel dirty if I was just some normal dude. Like I, I can't just be, I'm the, his son. You know, like in the old movies, when you watch Conan, they say, Tate, the son of da da. I was always the son of Emery Tate, even at the chess tournaments. It's the son of Tate, the son of, the son of, the son of. The expectation was there. And instead of it preventing me from creating my own identity, it, I was actually the opposite. It's like, okay, I have to be fantastic. And I was cerebral enough. I said to my dad, look, I can't be as good at chess as you can. I don't think I can do this. And he said, well, you could, but belief is a huge part of it. So if you don't believe you can, then what else are you going to do? Because I remember telling him I didn't want to play chess anymore. He said, that's fine, but you're not going to not play chess and fucking watch TV. You play chess for six hours a day. So you need to come to me with a plan for six hours a day. So what are you going to do with your life? And I chose fighting because I said, listen, chess is one-on-one -on -one competition without luck, without team, no ball, no wind to blow the ball on the net. What if I fight? He said, okay, I respect that. You can be a fighter. So it was, it, he wasn't trying to force me to do anything, but it was, he had, he was a very regimented individual and that's who he was. And I had so much respect for him and he was my superhero. I wanted to be like my dad. And even from a very young age, they, even if you were to Google up my dad, Emery Tate, and look in the chess community, they called him E.T. for Emery Tate, but also E.T. like the alien because he was a bit strange. But the way he played chess was so unorthodox that sometimes he had some spectacular losses, but sometimes he had some spectacular victories against some of the top players in the world. So everyone was scared of him because he played with such recklessness that he was like, all oh, it's blitzkrieg. If you get through it, you survive, you get yeah. to beat him. But when it's coming hard and the heat's on, he destroyed some grandmasters so badly that they took like a year away from tournaments, like genuine like embarrassment. That's how he played. So nobody wanted to play my father because it was a risk. Right. Because he's he's only top 200 in the world, but he's smoking top 10. Sometimes he loses, but sometimes he'll fucking take your head off. So he was an anomaly. So whenever I went to a chess tournament, they're like, Tate's here, Tate's here. There's always the rumbles and oh, Tate's here, fuck's sake, Tate's here, Tate's here. So the name was always feared. And I think that was part of it for me. I, I want when I when I turned up to a fight event, Tate's here, Tate's here. Tate's here. I want my name to mean something. Right. I want it to mean something like and, and that was always very important to me. And I was just told, look, you want your name to matter, then you have to go make it matter. It's not going to matter by default. And if you have good parents um, and, and, I was, and, and some hardship and some trauma, I think any man can become anything they want to be. If you enjoyed this video and you want to watch the entire podcast, click over here. And if you want to be connected with experts, influencers such as Kiyosaki, Tate, Connolly, Paul Menteri, myself, and others, download the app Minect, where you get a chance to connect with these folks by the minute. You get to by the minute or have FaceTimes with them, 15 minutes, ask them any questions you may want to have. Download the app Minect and start connecting with influencers and experts today.